Behind the large entrance door to this derelict military fort on the south coast of England is a forgotten ruin of a structure that once protected the country from incoming attacks in the wars. Today little is left, but the history and effectiveness of the site is the reason we decided to visit on a recent trip. Plus, the fort is next to the sea, so it gives some great panoramic views which is an extra bonus. On a windy but sunny morning we were walking up to the grand entrance which has been sealed tight since 1995, however the property wasn't used as a defensive structure since 1956 when coastal defence was abolished. Once we made it to the top of the fort we were surprised at how big it actually was, we came down some stairs to analyse the structure from ground level. Although nowadays the Grade 2 listed building is partly supported by scaffolding to prevent it from crashing down, the size and architecture of the facility is still very impressive. The most recent use it had was as a plumber's workshop until 1995, which was held in this two-storey building opposing the curve of the fort. However, it appears that someone is living in this specific building now. Some items led us to believe that and another explorer ventured inside to find a mattress and what looks like a living space. It didn't bother us that we weren't going to go inside as that building is incredibly stripped with nothing of interest to see. The ivy growing on other parts of the fort on the other hand was very interesting to look at, obviously progressing through the long years the structure has endured abandoned. The fort's construction finished in 1871 with a total of £58,766. Its purpose was to fire onto the three bays surrounding it, one of which led to Portsmouth Harbour. It could hold 22 guns in casemates, which are the arched spaces you see on the curve of the facility, with five more heavier pieces of artillery on the roof. we could make our way up to the back of the casemates to have a closer look at the brickwork involved in the building. The mossy decay on the bricks didn't take away from the fact that these spaces are where 22 guns would go. You can see the tracks on the floor. There would also be bunk beds and living spaces for the workers on the site which would obviously be live 24-7, alert for enemy attackers. It must have taken a long time to design the arched ceilings in the casemate rooms, probably done because the building is built into a hill for camouflage from an outside perspective. Before World War I the fort's walls were strengthened with substantial amounts of earth, which is why it seems invisible if you looked at it from the ocean. Since disuse, plans have come into play for it to become a car park for beachgoers, ever more likely since arsonists have targeted the historic building with fires breaking out. A curved underground passage and many rooms lies beneath the fort, which would have been used for storage of ammunition, crammed into these large spaces. When it was ready to be used, it would be sent straight up to the guns via an ammunition lift which was still here and one of the only remnants we found on the exploration. The old signs from the war period was a nice find as well, indicating to us what stuff was. From 
From here we headed all the way up to the roof where, although windy, we could take in some impressive views of the surrounding sea and towns. We could also see the circular positions for the five heavy guns, some were dangerous to walk on as the metal rusted away. Sadly, there were no guns to see themselves, but it was crazy to think that this is one of the ways England protected itself during the wars, and how little it has been reduced to now. There are plans for the fort to become an upmarket housing complex, but as of now, no serious work has taken place. We hope you enjoyed taking a quick look at such a historic structure. Our social media links are in the description as always. Mm -hmm.